Good evening. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a storyteller. And these are exciting times to be a filmmaker and a storyteller because we're changing history. I anticipate that in your lifetimes, history, meaning the human story as we know it, will change completely. That doesn't mean that we're going to go back and change what happened. It's not about time machines. It means that we're going to go back and reassess and reinterpret what happened. That we're going to look with fresh eyes and that the story we end up with will be very different from the story that we understand to be true today. What do I mean by reinterpret? From Herodotus to the latest blockbuster you saw in a multiplex, this is held to be true. History begins when a white man walks into the picture. It only happens in his presence, and it only concerns what happens to him. The rest of us are at best bit players. We're supporting players. We're there to support his story. Often we're absent or irrelevant. That is the distorting prison through which history has been seen. And that has bled into the stories we tell. What would stories, what would history look like without that filter? Imagine going back and seeing all the many people and points of view that are omitted from the conventional narrative. We would soon come to understand that what we're taught and what we recognize as history a lot of the time is, in fact, fiction. Which brings me to real fiction, the movies. The stories we tell reflect how we see history. It's hard to overestimate how much the moving image, TV and cinema, is part of this problem. Because it's through television and cinema that most people interact with their history. We know the Tudors are important because of how many TV series, how many movies have been made about them. So which films are made tell us who was important? Who contributed? Who was worthy of respect? Who mattered in the story? You might say, well, you know, all this is in the past. Does it matter now? I say desperately. How can you convince people you matter today when everything they watch tells them that you never mattered in the past? If narrative, film, and television are part of the problem, they must be part of the solution. So my task, our task as diverse storytellers, is to reinsert ourselves and our stories and our points of view into the narrative. In doing so, correcting the record to give a more accurate representation of the past. You could say our job is to create fact. How will this be done? Who's the, whose job is it to do this? Well, all of us, really. People often say, well, where are you going to find these stories? Well, they're everywhere. I'll give you an example. The Mona Lisa hangs in a room in the Louvre, and it's almost like a pilgrimage to go up and, and go and see it. But photographs taken in that room would often show that the black person in the, who was in the room would be looking in the opposite direction, have their back to the painting. And people were wondering, what are they looking at? One day, one of the curators in the room went up to the lady, a black lady, and said, what are you looking at? And she pointed. Opposite the Mona Lisa is a monumental painting, The Wedding Feast at Cannae by Veronese. And in the corner of that painting is a little black boy serving wine. The visitor was transfixed by him. 
What was his story? What was he doing there? Who were his parents? He was a story that needed to be exhumed. Which brings me to Gorilla, created by Academy Award winning John Ridley and co-written by John Ridley and myself. We're all so familiar with the images of the civil rights movement in the 60s. People are comfortable with the church-based, non-violent ethos that decade produced. But the story, of course, is bigger than that. What happens when you look at the civil rights movement in the 70s? The 70s were a decade of change. Think of OPEC, the winter of discontent, strikes, punk rock. It was also a time of intense political activity, of disillusionment, when the struggle for civil rights entered a more militant phase through characters who would not normally be heard. So when we decided to look at what ought to be quite a familiar event in our history, just by looking at it at a different time, we saw a different story. What stories are important? When you look at history without the familiar filter, you find that that question answers itself. If we think of something as familiar and endlessly filmed as the Second World War, we know all the images, we know all the stories, the bravery at Dunkirk, the Battle of Britain, the Desert Rats, French Resistance, there are a thousand movies. But one million people of color from the colonies fought for Britain and the Allies in the Second World War. Where are their stories? Once you, be, once you go back and look at history afresh, you'll find that, for example, the occupation and the dismemberment of Abyssinia, the exile of its emperor, the fall of a, of a country that had roots, biblical roots, is probably as important as, the, as what happened in Czechoslovakia, a country that was only 20 years old. It's important when we choose our stories as well that we remove the lens that filters out the color of people when that is convenient. So when we look at the Second World War, this is what we see and what we believe to be true. So this is Burma, but this is also Burma. But when we look at history, we don't conveniently forget that one of the greats of French literature, Dumas, was a black man, or that the father of Russian literature, Pushkin, was a black man. In Gorilla, we chose to look at the consequences of another period of history, the consequence of Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech, not through the eyes of those who engaged with that politically or who had moral opinions, but through the eyes of the people who were most affected by it. From whose point of view, then, should a story be told? Who is a hero? Stories and movies have been overwhelmingly told from one point of view. I feel my job as a storyteller is to wrench the camera of history from the direction it has always been pointed at and point it elsewhere. And when you tell different stories from different points of view, you do pro produce different kinds of hero. The past may not always be a comfortable place for us all to visit together, but visit it together we must. My story is not only the saintliness of Gandhi or Mandela, it can also be the righteous fury of Toussaint Louverture taking Haiti. You have the right to be the hero of your own story, not to tell it through somebody else's eyes 
and not to have to make everyone comfortable while you're telling it. In Guerrilla, the love story of Jazz and Marcus, we examine the consequences of an ordinary couple taking up arms in a political struggle. So who, who's going to tell these stories? It's known, of course, we need more diverse storytellers. And you probably think, what does a diverse storyteller look like? Well, like me. But that's not true. We're all diverse storytellers. Every last person in this room is in his or her own way diverse because the mold was broken when you were made. So diversity doesn't just mean one way of looking at life. We don't make that the new orthodoxy. When you want to approach what stories are told, you look inside yourselves and you say, what are the stories that I want to hear? What, what is it that makes me different and what makes me? What is it that I want to hear? Determining what history is used to be the privilege of the few, not anymore. What's also exciting about telling stories now is the diversity of media in which those stories can be told. And if you feel your story is not being told, remember, history no longer just be belongs to people who are powerful or who can control what's being said. It actually belongs to anyone who was there. It belongs to anyone who has an iPhone and can record what happened. History has sort of become, well, it's like a party. Anyone can join in. In the end, you say, but why, why, is, why is history, why is it all so important? I believe history provides a context for your life. It can be a source of pride, but most importantly, it is your second skin. It's a shield that allows you to be able to withstand whatever comes because you know who you are, you know where you've come from. So, if you feel your history, your story is not being told, register your presence. Write about it, think about it, tell your stories. Speak to your grandparents, speak to your parents, speak to anyone that can help you know your story. Get out your iPhone, put your story into the canon because history is a party. Thank you. <laughs>